Hi everyone, welcome to season two, episode one of Morning Matcha. I'm here today with a longtime friend of mine, Meredith Baird Fagoni. She's an author of Everyday Raw Detox and Coconut Kitchen, and she's the founder of Nusifera and a new mom. Hi, thanks for coming all the way down here. Of course, it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so your life has changed so much in the last three years. You got married, you have Livia, and you started Nusifera kind of before and in between and simultaneous yeah. to finding out I was pregnant yeah actually was the timing yeah so is did everything like has life turned out the way you thought it would turn out yeah I mean I I feel so blessed with everything that has happened and I think it's really been sort of a testament of when you're like on the right path like things things just happen and so I feel like very grateful with with where I am um But I definitely a few years ago sort of made a conscious decision to like start working on myself and and sort of trying to get rid of blocks that I thought that I had that I must have had. Um, Because at a certain point, like when you're not doing exactly what you want to be doing, you have to look at what you are doing to sort of create those barriers, I guess. And Kundalini was definitely something that contributed a lot, I think, to sort of where I am now, because I started focusing on, I guess, my internal self rather than just like all the external and yeah I mean I couldn't be more grateful for where where it's all headed yeah and well before that I mean you've been in the wellness scene for so long and writing everyday raw was it everyday raw detox right yeah everyday Everyday detox every day I so I've kind of ghost written and then co-authored several books. And then Everyday Raw Detox was really my first book with my name um, as the primary author. Mm -hmm. And Coconut Kitchen. And then Coconut Kitchen. Yeah. But then, so I guess my question is like, you were in the wellness scene and you've been a big part of it, or at least even me, like I was looking up to you and I still do. But what shifted from, because wellness right just like you're focusing on eating and nutrients and optimal nutrition but then like changing the focus on um like personal stuff right yeah like growth personal growth and things like that so what did something shift or were you kind of always into that well I think I mean I became interested in well like in wellness like specifically as it relates to food at a very young age and was always drawn towards a plant-based lifestyle and definitely before it was trendy Mm -hmm. and have just like, it's always been my path. And for whatever reason, I mean, we could get into some of the things that I think sort of led me that way. But, um, you know, I think when you, food is sort of the first portal into well well-being and when you start paying attention to what you put in your body then you start paying attention to what you put on your body and the people that you surround yourself with and how you're just sort of operating and navigating life like you you just become more mindful altogether and that definitely I've always had that piece of me and have known that that was true but for so long the focus was food and then I think just as I've gotten older you know like I turned 30 three years ago. I mean, it's definitely 30 could seem like it was a major catalyst for change for me because I just like woke up and it was like, okay, I'm 30 now. I'm not like 23 anymore and I'm ready to sort of evolve. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. so awesome. Yeah. And well, I want to get into like what got you into the whole wellness scene. A little bit to begin with. Like, how did you gravitate towards that? Yeah, well, I grew up in South Carolina and I just was exposed. My aunt and uncle raised my cousins vegetarian, so I was exposed to it through them. And we were all sort of the same age. And so we'd go on vacation and things like that. I was surrounded by it. And I think I think I always thought it was kind of cool. My dad was very sick when I was growing up and he battled cancer pretty much all of my adolescence. And when he, so I had to become very self-sufficient at a young age as my parents were traveling and dealing with his illness. And 
So I always was feeding myself or feeding my sister and lived with a grandmother who was not a good cook at all. And I kind of had to figure it out. And I think as I started to try to have to figure it out on my own, then I started looking at sort of what we were doing. And it has always been in me. And so around 12, I was like, I'm giving up meat. I want to become a vegetarian. And I tried and failed and tried and failed pretty much. I shouldn't say failed. Mm -hmm. I tried and was living in South Carolina in the early 90s and was a little kid. So, you know, I went back and forth, I guess. And it was really in high school that I sort of made the commitment and was obviously old enough to start reading cookbooks and making things with my mom. And like around holidays, I would always create the menus. I was always just super passionate about it. I mean, I remember skipping school, laying out in our backyard, like tanning, reading cookbooks. With your mom? No, just by myself. (laughs) Like I would lay in the backyard and read read cookbooks like the Moosewood and Vegetarian Epicure, and I just like loved it. Mm -hmm. And even my senior year in high school, I did a paper on vegetarianism and the history of it and went into veganism and raw food and, and all of it and just like was super curious about it. And stuck with it in in college, really, when the internet started being more of a thing and blogs just started, I was able to do more research about it. And that was kind of the catalyst, I think, for for how I ended up going to raw food culinary school. Um, In college, I, I worked in restaurants a lot. And... First of all, I started college and I couldn't stand it. I went to college at Charleston in South Carolina and I thought that we would go to school and it would be like people were in coffee shops and like going out to dinner and drinking wine and just being adults. And I was like so excited for that. But I got to college and everyone was an idiot because they were like let off the chain. And it was like I was super over it. And so that's sort of when I found the restaurant industry. And I'm like, these are my people. Like they like to have fun, but there's a more like it's more purposeful, I guess. Yeah. And so I worked in a Turkish restaurant in college and there was tons of vegetarian food and the owner was this crazy artist. And it was, I sort of found a community through that and ended up traveling a lot and being really exposed to a lot of fine dining and went and had a very, I think my college education was sort of like a sophistication Mm -hmm. of, of some sort. And all the while kind of, maintaining the vegetarian ethos and being passionate about that but uh, that's I think that's kind of the beginning where it all came together for me of just like the importance of like the vegetarian movement now we see it plant-based or whatever you want to call it or even just the wellness movement it would have never had a chance if it hadn't been rooted or sort of re-rooted and just doing it well and yeah. being able to go out to a nice dinner and have an amazing plant-based meal and sharing it with wine and ambiance and all of it. Because in the beginning, it was so hippie. And I love that. And it sort of makes me sad sometimes when I think about how now it's like so exploited and yeah. it's just like everywhere, or at least in Southern California. But it did change things. It did change sure. things. Yeah. yeah. For the masses. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I, I don't know. I feel like I identified that identified with that at least very early on um after college I went and studied raw food at this place called living light culinary arts and is it still open it is yeah and it's it's like it's a really cool place and it was really funky and I remember when I was going like I always thought I would go to law school I always thought I would be a lawyer really yeah and that was like my plan I was going back in the fall but I took this like interim to go do this raw food culinary course that summer. And I was like, is this some weird like obsession that I have that I was like, something wrong with me? Like <laughs> what's going on? And anyways, I went and like, I met all these amazing people. Everybody was cool. I was, this was like, it was awesome. And this was like in 2006. And from then I th- think my life has sort of been like following your passion just staying the course and I've been able to meet people along the way that have been able to support my creativity and have appreciated it which I'm grateful for and so it was never like you wanted to I mean you never like made the intention like I'm gonna follow my passion and I'm gonna do like what I want to do 
it was kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna go to law school and, or did you always, was that a passion of yours as well? Like that why was did you definitely go, not a passion. Like what that, was that about? Well, I mean, my dad was a doctor and my mom was a lawyer. And mm. so I thought women were lawyers and men were doctors. Okay. Yeah. Like my yeah. whole life. Okay, now that makes that's sense. like not that way at all, but. <laughs> and then it just like unfolded, like you, you know, went to culinary school and then you found a sense of like creativity within. Yeah. And I was really good at it and yeah. I felt very confident about it. Like in, in class, it was just like, like I, I definitely understand food and mm -hmm. that is my most creative medium and I feel comfortable around it and just feeling like it just it's easy yeah. to me and like it's what I love yeah and that felt like so so good yeah. and yeah so at Living Light it was funny right right around the time I went to Living Light was just when blogging was kind of starting and there was some raw food blogs that were out there. And one of the guys who had kind of the most famous raw food blog, I s ran into him in San Francisco. And like, at that time, nobody was a famous blogger. Nobody recognized anybody from that kind of thing. And he was just like blown away and put me on his site. And I decided that I was going to, because after you go to a school like that, and which, you know, you've taken, mm -hmm. you've taken, um, raw food courses. And when you go to kind of like a specialized school like that, they definitely pump you up to like be an entrepreneur and like create your own business. Yeah. And that was something I had never thought of before. So, I mean, I remember writing a letter to myself at Living Light with that. And that was kind of when it shifted for me of like, okay, I can create my own career. I can create my own path and basically make my own way. And that happened that yeah. happened then because I was empowered to do it. So what about your mom? Like, what was she thinking with all this? My mom has been awesome. Like, even though she um, was very much a student and kind of stuck to it, stuck to a specific path. And pretty much all my family is sort of like that, like academic, I guess, uh, she's always been really supportive of both my sister and I being creative. I mean, I remember my sister is amazing and super creative and very smart, but she is not a student. And I remember my mom being like, okay, Anna cannot go to a regular four-year college. What are we going to do? And so we're like, send her to FIT because they don't require SATs and <laughs> things like that. So she's always been really supportive. And I think known that I was not going to, mess it up you know yeah yeah so yeah okay so I guess like you know you touched a little bit on your dad yeah and it, we've never really talked that much about it but I'm yeah. curious how like when you started working on yourself and um and going through your blocks and whatnot like if anything like with your dad came up because I've heard you talk a little bit about that process for you and I really thought it was amazing like you opened up and you were saying you know like your mom was kind of like okay like this is what happened and we're gonna move forward and I yeah. think that's you know really awesome to acknowledge what you went through and then know that like it's gonna be okay and you're gonna move t forward yeah. together as a family and not just like dwell um but I'm just curious because we've never really talked yeah. about that yeah um well my dad was sick for a really long time and it was very drawn out and it was very disruptive to our life for years. Like, I mean, he was diagnosed with cancer in his early 20s or his late 20s um, in med school, actually. And then he passed away when he was 46. So he had it looming like the whole time. And but he was actively like in radiation, like doing very experimental treatments and just like handicapped for like five years before he passed away. And so it was from, I mean, I remember being picked up from the fourth grade, like knowing that it was like really going downhill. And then he didn't die until I was in the seventh grade. So it was like really intense. And as awful as that is, it does prepare you and your family. And so by the time he passed away, it was definitely like time. Mm -hmm. And so I think, 
in some ways that makes it easier. Um, but also, obviously, the disruption you experience is, like, awful and totally sucks. But what was the question again? <laughs> well, just, like, how did that come back or how, does it come up for you? Uh, like, just through worry, worrying it or defi- fears? I, and- I mean, definitely now that my life feels like so cozy and good. Like I, I'm just always waiting for the other shoe to drop. And like, when's this going to happen or what's, you know, who's going to get diagnosed with what? And you can't let your mind go there. And it Mm -hmm. definitely fluctuates probably with hormones too. Sometimes (laughs) I'm like, yeah, today's amazing. And like, we're killing it and let's do it. And then some days it's like, oh my gosh, I love all of you so much. Like, I just like don't ever want any of this to change and it does. And then having a baby, you literally see life flash in front of your eyes. Yeah. Which is crazy. Like you're growing a human and you know that like it isn't going to stay this way like forever, even for a month. (laughs) And so that's really its own set of like stress and Um, You know, so for sure, my experience with my dad, like, I see that life can just pass by, pass by and be derailed in ways that you never knew. And so it it comes up in that way, for sure. As far as, like, the trauma, you know, definitely choices that I've made in my life and relationships and all of it, you could somebody could read into it and say, well, this is why you did this. Mm -hmm. But I don't necessarily identify that with it. It's part of, it's all part of the same story, I guess. Yeah. I I think that's like, I've never gone through something traumatic like that, but it's interesting just like the human mind and where it goes and how different things that we worry about and fear and, whether it's because things aren't going the way that we want or even when things are amazing, like how we can just go somewhere in our head and have it completely change an experience or a moment. It's so crazy. So crazy. Yeah. And that's why, you know, that, that is why meditation and doing thing. I mean, I don't know how, I don't know that you can ever really control the mind. Like I'm still on the fence about that because sometimes when I feel like I'm being more mindful, then I'm just like in my head more. Like neurotic. And neurotic. (laughs) Whereas if I just kind of like go with the flow and like I'm a little more relaxed and just chilling out, then I'm happier. Yeah. So there's a balance. I mean, in terms of working on the brain. The brain. Yeah, and that kind of takes me to, like, just the whole wellness thing in general and just how much I admire. And, like, we've talked about this in the past, but just kind of, like, your definition of wellness and, like, when it pertains to food, but also all sorts of things. But in terms of food especially, I just find, like, you're so balanced and I'm... And just everything, really. Like, what is your definition of wellness and well-being? Like, how do you view it? Because it is so balanced and effortless, I feel like, on your part. Well, I think, and I actually think about this a lot, because I think there are two, there are two types of people and two ways of going about it. And for me, like, I can be balanced about it because I've dug deep at times Mm -hmm. and I have I you know I know what it feels like to live on only raw food and green juice and be totally just like psyched on life and like everything's bright and wonderful but then eventually you burn out on that and I've had times where I'm just like being a little more lush and like having more to drink and more to eat and it feels so good but then you sort of get you know, you get burned out on it Mm -hmm. too. And so my balance has definitely come from experimenting with both sides. But I think in order for people, you know, people who have just been living a certain way for a really long time and haven't exposed themselves to more healing modalities and healing foods and maybe have rejected it, like they need to like go deep. 
yeah. for a couple of months and just see what it feels like. And then obviously on the flip side, there are people who have been obsessed with health and cleansing and all of this for so long that they're just completely neurotic and annoying to be around and they're not relaxing at all. Mm -hmm. And they need to just like chill out, chill out. <laughs> so I guess my definition of wellness is finding a balance yeah, and finding a balance in your own life where you can be where you have standards, but you're also a part of the community that you're in and you're not isolating yourself from your friendships and your family and your relationships. Like nobody wants a, I mean, at least I don't want a preacher at every meal. And yeah. if you're around, you know, like if you're at Thanksgiving and it's going to be meat and potatoes, bring an amazing salad and bring an organic wine or whatever you're into and be like, this is amazing. Like, here you go. And mm -hmm. then everybody's happy about it, but don't go in and be like, do you know how many turkeys are killed at Thanksgiving <laughs> and blah, 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 and just all the stuff. And then it's, then they're just like, it's a buzzkill. Yeah. So no, yeah. I totally know. What you yeah. Mean. That's how I feel too. It's like, obviously because we went down that rabbit hole, our definition of balance is probably different than right. someone who hasn't and just letting yourself like if you need you know to go on some sort of protocol because you're going through something like do it but then like don't you know don't stress out yeah because when I really believe that when you stress out it's so much worse than eating like the green salad that you were stressing out about or like not eating the piece of bread that like isn't going to kill you, you yeah totally I mean the whole orthorexia thing and people being so obsessed um it's real it's real yeah. es especially in this community I mean I think and you know it's fun for me last week my aunt and uncle who are the ones that I kind of became vegetarian through their exposure and they've been completely vegetarian for like 30 years and wow. but they've never they're sort of s stuck in the 80s vibe of it a little bit where it's like tofu. pasta and tofu yeah. and cheese and they're very in in that world and when they were down here I mean I made very conscious effort that we we're only going to go to veg places so they could really see like what all is out there and they were just like blown away Aww. And even though they've traveled a ton and it was super fun. And so you really see how lucky you are to be in this community where you can make mindful choices like easily. Yeah. Because definitely when I'm traveling or back home in South Carolina and we go to dinner and stuff, it's like, oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, it's a little. What about someone who's just starting out? What do you think is like number one on your list for starting out? Like for me, it's like oil, oils, like canola oils. Like I'm so crazy about that, but that's like a good place for me to hold my, like that's my standard. Yeah. And I really don't like to move past and like include that. Obviously I'm not going to go neurotic when like my family has a home cooked meal and doesn't use the kind of oil that I want, but I think it's a great place to start yeah. to notice. Yep. Um, but like, what is yours? Like, I feel like, I feel like you would say walking or something <laughs> like that, you know? Oh, like what, what creates, what's just my thing that I like have to do? Well, for you. And also just like, if you were going to give someone advice who just like doesn't have or hasn't even started to pay attention at all. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, I think a huge thing is familiarizing yourself with food and ingredients and like started starting to read recipes and just being curious. And then if you start reading recipes, then you start seeing what is what's in packaged food. And you see that like half the stuff out there, like you could never make yourself because there's all kinds of processed ingredients. And then you kind of can start putting it together of like packaged processed food is full of crap that I can't even buy at the grocery store to make for myself. Mm -hmm. And regardless of if you love to cook or not knowing just knowing a little bit about it and familiarizing yourself a little bit with it I really think starts to help you connect yourself to food and like what you're putting into your body and so 
And walking. And walking. And and walking is huge. Yeah. I mean, it's huge. And just like touching your toes and doing a little stretching. <laughs> um, okay, so I wanna talk a little bit about Nucifera. Yes. And how it's going and just like getting started, you know, I think especially having a product that you make that you're trying to get into different stores. Like we talk about this all the time where, you know, you have to be persistent and you can't like let it get to you when someone says no or because like I always say when you get a no, you're just getting closer to a yes. Like, yeah, because you're going to get so many no's before you get a yes. And or I don't know, maybe that wasn't your experience, but like what? was it like because it just kind of started organically yeah and it feels effortless or it looks like it's effortless but I wonder if you've had any like roadblocks or you know times where you've really let it um if it's ever brought you down and what you do about that for sure uh well I started so I started Nucifera so I wrote a book Coconut Kitchen in 2014 ish and then it came out in the beginning of 2015 and that was the first time I had written a book just on a single ingredient. So I really dug deep on coconut oil and all the benefits and just, no, well, not just coconut oil, but coconuts in general. But I had a lot of coconut around me and I've always loved coconut, but I started using it on my body. And I've always tinkered with skincare really probably in the last five or six years. When I moved to New York, I had like a brief minute in New York. And when I was there, my skin just freaked out because it was so dry and cold and I started experiencing like eczema and was actually diagnosed with psoriasis and oh. I had just really dry skin. And I was like, I do not have psoriasis. I do not have eczema. <laughs> like, what can I do? And so then I started researching all these plant-based oils and essential oils. And I mean, I, I probably did some things that made me smell like just a freak, <laughs> but like what? Like essential oil. I mean, when or? I first discovered a oil of oregano and oh, I yeah. had what I thought was psoriasis, which now doesn't exist, but I was like dousing my hair in oil of oregano. Oh my God. And I mean, that smells super strong, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, yeah, I was, I was experimenting and then with coconut kitchen, really experimenting more with coconut oil. And what I saw using coconut oil, which has never been like enough as a body moisturizer for me, but using it just like on my face and to wash my face, like I had spots and things that like just started to disappear. And I really noticed how it sort of like can help even skin tone and brighten your skin tone. And then not washing with like a cleanser, even though I was using like ones from the health food store, like yeah. you don't need to wash your face with soap. Yeah. Like you can just oil cleanse. And that yeah. was a, a game changer. I developed this balm formula that I was using all the time. And my husband was like, you should really, we should really like do something with this. And was that for coconut kitchen or you did it for yourself? No, I had done it for myself. So I had been making my own skin creams and stuff for year, a couple years before I even wrote coconut oh. kitchen, but with coconut kitchen, because there is a section on beauty, I started being a little bit more like, specific about it and it wasn't just like mason jar dump you know here we go and then the results were sometimes good and sometimes not. yeah yeah but it was a more of a concentrated effort I guess and so yeah so he was the one that was just like we should brand it and you you could start selling it and so I was kind of like oh yeah okay I don't know how I really feel about that but I gave it to some of my girlfriends and I think I maybe even gave it to you mm -hmm. like in the beginning and everybody was like really enthusiastic about it yeah and everyone has been exposed to all the natural skincare and knows what's up and that was kind of confidence I'm like okay and now I mean I don't know what people did 10 years ago when they started a small business but now it's so easy with social putting up media. a site and social yeah. media and of course, like, I think being in this area is really supportive of women starting small businesses. Yeah. And so, yeah, so we actually launched it simultaneous to my finding out I was pregnant. So the beginning of last year, it was kind of like, I, I don't know, and people started reaching out and wanting to carry it. And I've, I have definitely been lucky with some of the accounts that we've gotten, um, and I do think it's part of being in this community and just having enough of a network. 
but I'm learning so much, yes, about myself and about, I I mean, I am a focused person, and when I start something, I actually don't stop, Mm -hmm. so, but that doesn't mean that there aren't moments that I'm, like, a little bit, I mean, it's kind of, it's scary, and I'm figuring it out as I go, and I am more just, like, confident and excited than ever that we're, I mean, I'm doing something really good and I'm really really excited about where it's gonna go and just digging deeper on the message and why we're doing it because women are so bombarded with just all these products and all the skincare and it can be so much more simple than how we've made it look Mm -hmm. like we've overcomplicated it like above and beyond and it's gross. And there's so many gross things that are out there that people are putting on their bodies. And I mean, you talk about the things like canola oil and stuff, which I obviously try to avoid, but I have a really sensitive nose. And actually, David, who is uh, filming us, mm-hmm. he can he can testify that he was wearing Nag Champa the first time I met him and I called him out on it. <laughs> Anyways, um, But yeah, I have a really sensitive nose and like you can just smell the product that people are using and all the hair conditioner and the sprays and all and the fake perfume. And it's just like, uh, it's like so cloying and like stresses me out. And yeah, so I feel like with Nucifera, just like having one amazing product that can do so many things is so empowering. Like now I pack to go on a, now you have a baby. The last thing you need is like a massive cosmetic bag. And I just put Nucifera in our bag it's good for all three of us yeah and we can just be free so that's your message with Nucifera yeah it's like you're overcomplicating things like it's not that difficult yeah and like clean and simple yeah and same way with food it's clean and simple I and love that yeah like I never you know I never really thought about I mean that's how I view it yeah but I never really thought about how yeah I mean because I'm not really like putting all that crap on myself either right, so I don't you're already it, doing but it it's crazy I mean yeah. we're clogging up everything yeah. all over our body just like I always say like we're covering the earth's crust with so much cement and all this stuff that it can't breathe and that's why yeah. we're in the situation that we're in and we totally. do the same thing with our face and yes. our body and our babies bodies and it's crazy and our hair our scalp all of it all of it no and yeah and I like in here you have all these amazing products and like I'm not saying that we're the one and only product yeah but like it's fun I mean if you're a girl and I love skincare and I love like smelling things and I mean I go into living libations like I live in Venice I go there way too much and like buy things that technically I may or may not need (laughs) and you know it's fun and for me now it's kind of a research there's a research element to it but just know that that's what you're doing and that you're being curious and having fun with it but you really don't need it and you don't even you know you you don't even need Nucifera if you don't can you use it as deodorant yes you can use it as deodorant yes are you planning on making other products I mean, um, like, obviously, t- you know, like, toothpaste or hair stuff. Right, or- right. Um, I am, I, I'm wanting to dig deeper on the message that we have and the product that we have started for now. I think, you know, we kind of started saying about pregnancy, but last year, like, being pregnant, like, I had an amazing pregnancy, and it was very easy in many ways, but your creativity creativity and just sort of the way my brain was firing was not the same like at all like less or more less way less (laughs) just like leave me alone I just want to read a book I don't really want to do much Mm -hmm. and because you're putting all this energy towards creating another human like it makes total sense but so it's so Nucifera has in the beginning, you know, it had that from me, which is not full, not my full like capacity. I mean, the other side of it that I'm very good at is making the recipe, making the formula, figuring out how to scale it, making it myself, which I love doing. 
And the more I research about co-packing, I'm just like, probably not. Yeah. Like, I want to have my hands in it. Like, mm -hmm. that's the fun part for me in so many ways. But just as far as the messaging goes and getting it out there more, like, now I have the space to be, like, really making that much more, much more of a part of what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure, I don't know. It'll happen. It'll happen. Well, I'm always... I'm the hardest person on myself as far as like, I should be doing this more. I should be doing that more, you know? And no, we're but all that I way. love what you're doing. Thank so you. as far as like getting accounts and things, it just like all kind of flowed. In the beginning, it definitely flowed. And I, I have started making more of an effort as far as getting new accounts and things like that go. And I'll continue to do that. So I'll like come knocking on your door and bring my baby and, you know, I listen to the How I Built This podcast like I all the time because podcast. it's just amazing to hear all the stories yeah. of how and uh, how entrepreneurs start. And um, my favorite one was like, I think it was Airbnb, and while they were starting Airbnb, did you listen? To yeah, that yeah, one? yeah. They like, pa or they just like took cereal. Oh yeah, and branded yeah. the cereal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just like bought it already made yeah already packed up that is so smart yeah but I love those kinds of stories no it's like it's so it's super inspiring for sure what else actually I, that was like gonna be one of my last questions I really love uh, you listen to so much stuff and read so many things and find cool people like artists and music everything so what are you like <laughs> into spot. right now on the spot um, I've, I've actually been listening a lot to the Rich Roll podcast. I've known who he was, but I started listening to it and he's a really great interviewer and his, he has a nice speaking voice and like a lot of the people he has on there are pretty cool because I've been sort of evaluating just sort of our MO as a family, as far as like vegetarian, vegan, and just kind of re-impassioned a little bit about a plant-based like lifestyle and sort of maintaining that in our home and um, because having Livia really made me care more about the future not that I haven't cared about the future before but just you know here you have this person that you've brought into the world and you want to make sure that there's going to be like a beautiful world for them to enjoy and so the environment has become a lot more important to me and I've sort of been reevaluating how we're going to move forward, like, especially with feeding. I mean, I've been breastfeeding, and now it's like, what do I feed a human? Uh, and there's so much. I mean, if you think that, like, what we should feed ourselves is confusing, what you should feed a one-year-old is, like, even more confusing. <laughs> and as you know, like, down here, so much of the movement is paleo and, so like, bone broth and, and all of this. And... I, I read it and like it makes sense to me on one level and then in, on another level it's just like not sustainable for the future like the way we got into the position that we're in is from people consuming too high on the food chain too many animal products and so I've sort of been just kind of rethinking how or concepting how I feel about all of that and I feel even more convicted that plant-based is the way to go I mean, as far as a future and definitely having a child makes you think much more about the environment and this, just this world. And like the act of nonviolence by choosing a plant-based diet is, is at least doing something and, and trying to make an effort. So I've, did I say that I was listening to the Rich Roll podcast? Yeah, yeah. And so listening to, to him and I've known who he was and never really thought about it for a really long time, but he's actually a great speaker and he interviews a lot of really cool people. And so that's been kind of fun listening to. And that's, <laughs> that's what you've been into. That's what I've been. That's kind of what I've been into. I've been into, like, I think I already said, I've been listening to a lot of entrepreneurial podcasts, the, how I built this podcast. Yeah. Um, and a book actually recently that's really inspired me, and I think you know her, Jasmine Hawken of yeah. Hairprint. Her husband, Paul Hawken, who's really one of the world's leading environmentalists, uh, he's come out with a new book called Drawdown, and it's really, it's almost like a textbook, and it really just quantifies what we can do. And 
is very solutions oriented. Which is nice. Yeah. yeah. Book that makes you feel much better about the future and much better about what you can do as far as making a difference. And I think, I think we hear my, my baby in the background. <laughs> She's probably calling for me. But yeah, just re my myself. I think some... I think over the last few years, like even though I've stayed on on my sort of mission and path, you you come back to you sort of come back to square one and you feel re inspired and you're like, This is how I got here to begin mm-hmm. with. Like this is my purpose, this is what I'm doing and and I wanna carry that message through to New Safara and one thing that we're definitely gonna do moving forward is have more of an environmental component. I mean, co- like coral reefs and in the yeah. ocean. I mean art I mean, there's many things are happening to the oceans, but I mean, one of the things that we're doing is increasing toxicity by the products that we use and the products that we wash down the drain. I mean, it's so sad if you go snorkeling areas. I mean, why did they say don't wear sunscreen? Think about it. You know, it's like it's killing the coral. Yeah. And that's really sad. And so I, I want Nucifera to, to carry that mi- mission behind it. Um, you know, wash it down the drain and it's safe for the environment. Yeah. So. I love that. Yeah. Actually, didn't know that they say when to not wear sunscreen when you go snorkeling. Yeah, certain areas where you go snorkeling and stuff, like you're not supposed to wear any kind of lotion and or things on your body. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That should just be a red flag right there. It for is. For everyone. I, I mean, I feel like it. it I wonder if zinc counts. I'm sure that zinc is probably not great for coral, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, mm-hmm. I think I think it's a good point because that I go back and forth all the time, too, because it's like um, I want to go by what I feel best and what my body feels best. But at the same time, the political situation right now and I think just what's happening we just really have to try our best to do as much as we can on a personal level. And sometimes, you know, like even with the store, it's like we get so many boxes. I'm sure you go through so much waste or recycling and all sorts of things. And I, one of the things that I'm not the best with is recycling and just, you know, keeping myself accountable and like having a staff that is really actually on top of it um is really helpful yeah and I think that's great that you guys are doing that as a household and and having a child definitely makes you just evaluate how you operate yeah and want to set the best example I mean you hear people say that and I've always kind of like yeah yeah of course of course of course but it's true and I feel really like I guess empowered to make a difference in her life and set a really good example, which is really, it's fun because you kind of get to do it all over again in a way. Yeah. So that's so cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I had so much fun with you so and Olivia. much fun. And what you guys are doing is so inspiring. And I've watched you just like grow this idea into something so big and awesome. And I know that it's going to be huge and I'm excited to be a part of it. Thank you. I yeah. feel the same.